going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. My name is John Krum, and I'm sitting here with Andy Chestein. He's probably one of the best, you know, cycling photographers around. And honestly, I mean, he was a cyclist and still is a cyclist, you know, but raced at a high level. And, uh, and, and, and but yeah, he, he has a life that most can be pretty envious of. I mean, he's your guy living in a van, traveling around, exploring the country and riding bikes, man, and, and, and having a blast doing it. Uh, I came on to him when I met Grant Koontz and uh, he tried to invite me. I think it was what, New Mexico? I don't know. He, I got invited to go do some We've... crazy, crazy van life dirt, <laughs> dirt travel trip in New Mexico. But anyways, Andy, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate the introduction. I was yeah. never a very good cyclist, though. But I'll take I'll take what you said. It's and I, good. I've seen you. I've, I've I've seen some photos, man. You've won some bike races. I know that you've uh, you've 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 hopped on the gravy train. But I think you were doing it before it was cool, cool. But you've 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 capitalized on it while it is cool to uh, to jump onto this gravel exploration. But anyways, man. So tell yeah. so give us a little bit of backstory on you and 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 how you find yourself in the sport of cycling. Uh. I guess the let's let's do a long story short. Um, I grew up uh, playing baseball, basketball, football. You know, yeah. kind of the traditional route, right? For sure. Um, I played basketball in college. Uh, left college uh, and was burned out on the uh, on the team sports and uh, for sure jumped super headlong into rock climbing for some reason. I think I just got synced up with some people climbing outside and got obsessed with that for a long time and then um and then again i i kind of just uh evolved into bike riding a guy introduced me to bikes and uh and then i left the rock climbing kind of passion behind and got insanely obsessed with bikes uh, obviously that was a little bit later on in life and so you know how that works when you start later you know there's less of a chance to do anything cool for sure. So, um, yeah. Within so reason. I mean, you that, got guys like Strickland and, and, and Michael of Woods. Of course. And I mean, they, they, of course. they capitalized on it for sure. And I think you capitalized yeah. on your own niche, but we'll, we'll get down that road here in a second. Sure. So that, but that's like, that's the long story short for me. Like I've been in sports my whole life. I've been active my entire life. Yeah. Um, I actually broke my uh, collarbone and scapula in a, a, a bike ride back in October and I was uh, sedentary for three months and that's the longest I've been sedentary in my whole life. So it was very weird to, oh, wow. to be like sitting on a couch for three months, you know? Um, but I have lived a life of, of movement. Right. And yeah. so it's always just been in all these little different genres of basketball, baseball, football, rock climbing, cycling. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. And so with, with, uh, with the van life stuff, like if I were to ask Andy, college sure. Andy, like, yeah, would you, would you have found yourself in a van? No. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been a super immature person my whole life. Ask, uh, Grant, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, my internet's showing that it's unstable. I'm just making yeah. sure. Um, so I've been an immature, like super immature my whole life. I'm probably still pretty immature, actually, I would argue. Um, so when I was in college, um, all I cared about was, you know, playing sports and chasing girls. And um, I never had this like true plan um, for my life. So no, I would have never imagined a fan. And I, I would have imagined you know, living in a foreign country, doing something, you know, who knows what, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's cool. I've and never so, really had a true plan to my life. Yeah. So how did you find yourself behind the lens? Through climbing. Um, yeah. uh, I went on a big long trip with a buddy one time and he brought his camera and uh, a, a film camera and uh, I picked it up and started shooting with it and was uh, immediately hooked. Um, it's a pretty yeah. simple story, but immediately hooked, came home, bought my own camera. Um, at the time I was working kind of in the corporate world. And this, of course, this was a long time ago. Um, and I, I, uh, I worked for a year, one more year in that corporate world that saved up a bunch of money. And then I quit to shoot photos. Wow. And, and so that, like, you have like that, no formal training. 
Like in, in none, my... no, none. Okay, yeah. Wow. No. I like to tell people I'm a pretend photographer. Like um I I learned it all myself. I picked it up all myself. And I'm still just a poser. I'm really literally just uh learning as I go, to be honest with you. I I never I, I'm not a professional photographer. I I am a hobbyist photographer that makes money at it. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And so, so who is who's the first bike brand that you ever worked with or, or just like in the industry? Allied. Allied yeah. was the first bike brand. And it, it Allied's an interesting story because our team, um, we we uh our team like pitched this sponsorship proposal to Allied. And a part of the part of the like the sponsorship proposal was that we would shoot photos for them and give them photos, right? That they could use for marketing purposes or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. And so that's really how I got in with Allied is we we pitched them on this deal. And then, you know, a couple months later, I pitched them on a personal, uh, a personal type of uh, contract, if you will, to do work for them. And they said, yes, you know, wow. it was very interesting uh it was i kind of backed into it to be quite honest so with like faking it until um, you make it kind of thing would you say like oh, absolutely bit? absolutely yeah. <laughs> i uh you know i shot you know you you and i have a lot of you know uh uh similar friends in the you know and i guess in the in the in the community right like yeah for sure um i shot a lot i shot bike races for free for years because i loved it right yeah um and so that's kind of where i like i guess if you i guess i honed my skills there right doing for sure. it for free for our, our team and for races or whatever the case may be and so I, I just like to tell people that i still am doing my hobby it's something that i would do for free if i could i'm just making yeah. money at it now you know uh, that's 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 awesome so are you in the van full-time or do you actually have a place i do have a home yes have a home. it's okay and <laughs> i, have, that, a and see, I and, have a real home yeah and it, well it's one of two things like it's it's you know some people get embarrassed and they're like yeah i have a home i'm not that cool and then other people are like come on man yeah i got a home like i got a place i can go yeah. so yeah i get yeah, asked that yeah, all the yeah. time and my van's like this big so it doesn't doesn't really yeah. happen but uh well, I, uh, I travel a lot for work, obviously. And so I'm on the road a lot. Um, and my wife is with me uh, a lot of the time as well, but a lot Dude. of the time she stays home, um, too. So like we spent, um, and we have an 11 year old, uh, daughter too. And so we're Dude. on the road and then we're, um, my daughter can do virtual schooling, um, yeah. which is cool. So like we spent all of February, uh, in Arizona, uh, I was doing some project work down there. Yeah. Uh, my wife was with me. The kiddo was there. And so it just depends. So yeah. we do have a home, it's home based, <laughs> which I love, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's, that's, that's freaking awesome, man. So what, um, what, what sparked the rule of three, man? So I, I get it. I get a message from you. And yeah, I, yeah. I see this. I get messages all the time about like, hey, I'm you should sure. come to this race and you should come to yeah. that race. And, and it's really cool because one, I don't know why anybody would want me at their race. I don't know what I bring. Or I think a lot of it's just like, hey, just bring yourself and let's hang out. But then I went and go, I looked at your course. Um, This race, this race looks crazy, man. This, this, looks, gonna be this looks intense. And so you could, you could pretty much ride three bikes, road bike, gravel bike, or a uh, mountain bike. Yeah. Talk about the course. And then I want to hear what your choice of bike would be. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, is it okay if I back up for just a second? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm going to back up for just a second. So uh, this isn't my first like dip into the water on events. So like oh, um, back in my climb, back in my climbing days, I founded this uh, a 24 hour cl uh, climbing competition. It's called 24 hours of horseshoe hell. And that was in 2006. And so we're like in year 15 or 16, I believe. It's still and running. It's like, it's still running. It's, it's grown wow. into this weird cult, uh, cult type. Uh, uh, it's, it's the largest rock climbing event and the longest running one in the United States. That's awesome. And it's really, it's really just outside magazine called it the burning man of rock climbing. Right. So it's like this five day wow. festival out in the woods. And it's a, it's a, it's like this love fest party, uh, that also has a rock climbing competition, like mixed in there's costumes, there's haircuts, there's free tattoos. There's like, wow, there's an award ceremony. You have to take a 
swig of whiskey before you ride the slip and slide down to get your award. It's all this weird quirky stuff, right? So, yeah. so that's been going on for 15 years, right? And my passion has moved into cycling since those days, right? I yeah. still love my climbing community. I'm still in it, right? I'm still very connected with the people. And do you run um, that event? It's my still? first. Or have Absolutely, you kind of like yes. passed it on? Oh, okay. Wow. I still run it. Yeah. Um, I, but I, obviously I have a lot of help because it's a pretty, it's, it's grown out of my control at this point. I was about to say, if it's being uh, called the Burning um, Man of Rock Climbing, it's probably pretty insane. It's, it's wild. It's <laughs> such a wild time. Um, but it's, it has this beautiful mixture of like wild partying along with like this intense sense of community where people take care of each other. And, um, it really is like, we call it like, uh, a family reunion every year, you know, wow. cause a lot of you, you meet, you've met a lot of your good friends there like 10 years ago and the, everybody still comes. And so anyways, so I do have this like background of putting this event on and, and, but my passion has really become cycling. And so, um, I've been really kind of just waiting for the right time for something to come along or an idea to come along. Right. That, that seems right, I guess, if you will. And a, a few years ago, uh, Sam Pickman and I, Sam is the, uh, the head, the director of product for Allied. We were, we were riding prototype Abel's, uh, the, the gravel bike, um, around Bentonville and a lot of the single track, just ripping it on, you know, talking about the bike, we'd stop and talk, talk about what we liked, what we did, that type of thing. And we got this idea that, you know, with the right bike, you could really, you could really go out. The, the original idea was that you could, with the right bike, you can really go out and hit all three surfaces in one day on one ride. And it really mixes up the day and makes it interesting, right? It gives you like a full sense of adventure. Say if you had like a 70, 80, 90, 100 mile day with a, with a, like a, like an even mixture of terrains, right? Like that's fun. Yeah. It keeps it exciting. <laughs> it keeps it mixed up and, um, and fresh. And then we were like, well, what if we put on a cool event? Because Bentonville does have this huge, huge network of really nice single track. Um, and also a lot of people don't know, uh, it has some of the best gravel, in my opinion, in the country. And then it has really insane paved tarmac riding. It's very yeah. good, you know. So we we sussed out this idea a couple of years ago. And uh, and we honestly, we've just been really waiting for the right time. And uh I think this year we just felt like it was the right time because, you know, mid South got canceled. And, uh, and so we, we thought, you know, maybe this will be the year of like small events. Right. So yeah. we were like, let's, let's launch it this year. Um, and we did a very last minute. We thought that we'd get two or 300 registrants. Um, and then we sell out 650 spots in a day. So Jeez. it was a huge surprise. Um, but that, that's kind of the backstory of the event, right? Yeah. So that's where it came from. But the whole idea is that we, I really do want to put this, this event on in the same spirit as the climbing event. Let's do some, let's do different. Let's do something different. Yeah. Let's, let's approach it differently. Let's, let's, uh, let's make it quirky and playful and fun and different. Right. Yeah. Um, with cool, interesting categories, you know, that, that, uh, that are, there's always going to be that pointy end of an event, right? There's always a pointy end of the race, right? But what about the people who, you know, the rest of us, right? The, yeah. the people like, you know, the people who their win is finishing, right? Or their win is finishing in a certain time or whatever the case may be. So we care about all of those, um, all of those participants, but we really want to care about the people that are like that's their goal for the day is to finish because this yeah. this this course is very hard <laughs> yeah and, and that's and that's the thing with gravel races like gravel races have gotten to the point where it's like the top 10 is kind of decided pretty quick and yeah it's it's and depending on the size of the event maybe but the, usually like i mean even at dk or unbound now um yeah those events i mean like about 50 miles in your your top 10 is kind of decided Sure. Um, and then people are battling out for 30 to 20 to so on and so forth. But for um, sure. Yeah. I think, I think this race is going to be definitely one of those races where the top tens kind of figured out on the single track or depending right. on when it, all those things kind of come up. But um, yeah, 
at the end of the day, man, people just want the adventure. Um, and, and they just want, yeah, they want to sure. say they did it. Yeah. And I yeah. think what makes your race so cool is there's always one thing with a lot of races. Like, I mean, with Southeast gravel, it was like 50, 50, mm -hmm. it was like the gravel and the road. Yeah. That's, that's what yeah. they brought. And then they also had a race that had single track, but with your race, you're bringing those three core things that make the race into sure. the race which is kind of neat and, to me and we're not like i'm i'm not under the impression that we're, we're the first to do this like i get it i understand i've done i've done gravel races with all three in them right yeah but this is this is definitely like a pointed mixture of those so like uh so the 100 mile course um we do have a 40 miler as well so the 40 miler would be for like someone who they're very interested but they just kind of want to dip their toes in and see you know if if it's for them um or maybe they're intimidated by the 100 mile course or maybe they're intimidated intimidated by the single track right so we do have a 40 mile course and it's going to be great as well but the 100 mile course is is like meat and potatoes it's like yeah. it's uh you're going to looking at about 30 miles of pavement 50 miles of um gravel and about 20 miles of single track so there's a wow. there's a hefty amount of single track on it yeah and you're i mean it's there's 10,000 feet of climbing. So, um, in a hundred miles. So it's a difficult course. Now the, the course is rideable on a gravel bike. Um, I've ridden the course. Uh, I rode the course last weekend on a gravel bike with like 650 B 50 millimeter tires. Right. And that, yeah. in my opinion, would probably be like the sweet spot, um, for equipment, but you know, you could, you could also get away with a lot of different rigs you know that's yeah. one of the cool things about this event is that you can it's your gear choice is is really dependent on upon you like if you're a really good mountain biker you can get away pretty easily with a gravel bike right because you're going to be able to handle the, the technical sections on the on the on the uh on the single track and uh and the way the the, the way the route is set up is that you're you're bumping in us in and out of things all day so like like you're looking at like a uh, you hit the first sector of single track like six miles in. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but not before a couple really hard climbs on pavement and gravel, both, you know? For sure. And then you pop out of the single track and then you're on pavement for a bit and then gravel and then you're back on pavement, gravel, single track. Like uh, it's kind of cool that you're kind of popping in and out of these sectors throughout the yeah. day, which is really cool. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, the, yeah. It's really interesting. But yeah. That's super cool. And so, where do you so you 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 want to see this event essentially become the burning man of gravel i think so i mean i and i want to put on an event that is fully community driven and that's what it's all about that's all it's about it's not about money it's not about you know we will always keep entry funds or, or entry funds entry uh fees low um, yeah because for me it's all about uh accessibility like i don't want to spend i don't want to charge people 140 bucks for registration for sure i want to charge people 65 bucks and give them 400 dollars worth of value in right yeah. so like that, that's kind of the whole idea um so i'm i i put the safeguards in place for me because so that like so like profits don't get in the way of 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 me so like i've gone out on a limb and said we're never going to be a hundred dollar entry fees ever we're never wow. going to ask cash sponsorships from from companies uh with a company if you want to uh, support the event you have to come to the event and do something that creates value at the event for the people right that's so that's cool. that's the rule that's it that's all that's the only rule is and so for example um we've got specialized um sponsoring us this year and so they're a big company right and i love specialized but what we also have little tiny local companies that want to sponsor the event as well in bitville so the whole idea is that you know Johnny's little bitty company can come in and make a bigger splash than specialized with a smaller budget, as long as they get creative and imaginative to create value for the for the people there. So it it levels the playing field for any company that wants to come in and support the event. And that's the way we'll always do it, no matter yeah. what. That's so that's awesome. it's really it really truly is about bringing people together um, and who can like how cool is an event where you can come and meet new friends right yeah it's like who wants to go who wants to go to an event race and go home i want to i want to i want to race 
or I want to compete or I want to just participate and I want to hang out with my friends afterwards and meet new people and talk about how terrible the day was, right? Yeah. Or like my terrible, you know, sidewall tear puncture or whatever. It is a very sadistic like, thing, isn't it? Like it's it just is, like, of course. <laughs> like I mean, Mid South, I will ne- that's my first ever gravel race. And I will never forget the before, during, and after. Um, I mean, Tulsa's got like that vibe of like the pre sure. and post, but yeah, it does. I've never experienced like I don't think I've ever. I don't know who the race promoter of Tulsa is. I've never. I mean, I've seen him, but like I, I haven't. Whereas like I felt like Bobby sure. was hanging out with me the entire race at Mid South. It was yeah. the wildest yeah. thing, and and maybe maybe I got spoiled on my first gravel race um, with Mid South. I I don't know. You did. But, of course but, you did. Yeah. But, uh, it was the longest hundred miles I've ever done in my life. Um, yeah. You can't really replicate that mud um, anywhere no. in the world. No, you can't. Um, yeah. And you can't really replicate the vibe. Like it's just, and I, and I noticed can't. that when I started bouncing to other gravel races, like not saying that any, every other gravel race is in, in, inferior. It's just like, they all have different keys and it's amazing. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah. And that's very, 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 very addicting and contagious. Um, it's true. It's true. I wrote an article probably three years ago that, and it, the title of it was "Mid South is the Future of Cycling," and here's why. Yeah, it is right. It really it is. gives it gives you that feeling of community. It also gives you that feeling of, dang, I just comp, I just really accomplished something that I didn't know that I could or would or you know what I mean. Yeah mean like you get that um you get that primal uh satisfaction because we evolved differently than where we live right now right as sure. humans right we we used to be you know we used to get chased by lions and stuff you yeah. know <laughs> so yeah. yeah and it what was wild to me it's like <laughs> i had just i wanted to say i came off a world cup um and we had oh just, yeah yeah. We had just like set the national record in the team pursuit and whatever else. And I think as, as yes. ironic yeah. as, as, as ironic as this sounds, it's like, I was actually glad they didn't know who I was. Like I, I rolled up and people were treating me like a normal <laughs> human. And, and uh, yeah. I mean, even Bicycling Magazine spelled my name wrong. They called me Josh Kroon. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, well, all right. This is this is gravel racing for yeah. me, you know, and, and yes, it was exactly it was, right. Yeah, it was humbling. Like it it took you from this yeah. like oh I'm hot shit on the trek, you know, like oh la da da da, and then you you come to gravel and nobody gives a shit who you are. They just want to hang out, man, and drink a beer, and and they don't even care if you win. Really, I mean, they think right. it's cool, but they at the end of the for day sure. they don't care, and it's awesome. Sure. And I I like that vibe and feeling because. It, you know, you know this just like anybody else, but if as a, you know, bike racer, when you don't win bike races, it's a bummer. You know, it is. It's, it's a bummer. Yeah. And it is. But honestly, crossing the line at like 67th or maybe even a little higher, but who cares? It's like at eight hours and 30 minutes, 100 miles. Exactly. Yeah. You feel like you won. <laughs> you do. And and you got pacing over there doing it in like six hours. And I know. You still feel like you won. And it, it's amazing. But uh well it's, anyway. and a lot of it has to do with obviously how Bobby handles it because he's so charismatic and full of energy and he's passionate about it, right? So yeah. that that creates uh an atmosphere that is intoxicating, right? Yeah. Um and then also just the opportunities around the event, like before and after to be able to uh, gather as a community, which I yeah. think is insanely important, right? Um, that That is kind of what we're hoping to do too, very similar cool. to like how Mid South is, you know? Um, now we're gonna get a little bit more playful and quirky. Like for example, we, we're gonna have interesting categories like, um, like we'll have a category that's the most selfies with farm animals. Yeah. So. Whoever takes the most selfies with farm animals, doesn't matter how long it takes you to finish the course. If you get the most selfies with farm animals, you're going to win that a great prize, right? So there's all wow, these little, awesome. you know, um, little quirky, like we're also going to do. So we also have a, a three person team category. So we'll have, um, we'll have uh, a, 
there's men's team, women's team, and then you can also do co-ed, co-ed, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, three three person teams will go off in one minute increments, just like I say a team time trial, right? Yeah. And you have to race the course together, finish the course together. And there's also checkpoints along the course that you have to stop and do weird things before you can move along, right? That's cool. So for example, like um, one of the checkpoints is a creek crossing with way steep water and there'll be painted rocks at the bottom of the creek. And somebody's got to go get one of those painted rocks and bring it to the finish line, you know, <laughs> wow. somebody on, on, each te- on each team. So yeah. there's these weird we're trying to make it playful, but also very difficult at the same time. So um, we're trying to add a few twists here and there, um, which will make it interesting as well. So um, yeah. So uh, if you have any more ideas on uh, cool categories, let me know. I was about to say, man, like I would have never (laughs) thought of those kinds of things, man. I mean, that's insane. So, you know, to kind of, kind of switch gears a little bit, like, like I said, man, I heard about you just, through friends wanting to do wild adventures and and they're like yo you should yeah, come yeah and it's like i'm getting a text message uh on a wednesday and it's like hey man i'm leaving thursday morning um you know yeah. we're about to go do this crazy adventure and it's like oh man that sounds insane like i'd love to do that but it seems like mm-hmm. you're always up to some sort of adventure so do you got anything cool planned i know you you're probably super busy but do you have anything cool planned for 2021 for yourself yeah yeah yeah. Um, so quite a few things, uh, kind of, I guess you would call tentatively planned Yeah. float trips, uh, uh, pack rafting adventures. Um, we've got a, we've got a, a, a trip planned where, uh, there's a, there's the Buffalo river out in Arkansas where we'll, so we'll, we'll float the river and then, um, with our bikes on pack rafts and then wow. we'll, we'll ride our bikes back to the, to where we put in on the river. So, a good six seven day trip right um and then i'm also planning to go back down to big bend i love spending uh time uh, in west texas yeah. and we'll probably uh float the rio for uh, a couple weeks there um and then uh peru peru in august i believe yeah wow. so we'll be uh we're gonna do a big bike packing trip in peru in august and all of those are kind of littered in between all those trips are littered like these little bitty tiny, like I'm assuming all the trips that you're getting invited on are the, are the tiny trips that me and Grant and other people are kind of going on yeah. where we, you know, where we're in like New Mexico or we're headed down to, you know, big Bend to bike pack for four or five days or whatever. Yeah. A lot of times those are fairly impromptu, you know, depending yeah. on where I'm at or whatever the case may be. I'm going to be out your way in June. We should hang out. Oh, I'm dude! Be in Colorado all the whole month of June. For sure, man. I mean, yeah, like I, uh, June's June's a big month for me, just in the sense of 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 state championships. But I'll be here, man. I'll be around. I definitely want to do an adventure. I'm still, I'm in the process, and so hopefully people hear this. I'm in the process of uh, trying to find a mountain bike for Leadville. I'm supposed to be doing Lead Boat, but uh, oh yes, I'm I'm the guy that applied to Lead Boat, and I I don't know if they took it as a joke, but. Uh, I literally said, <laughs> I don't own a mountain bike. And then I told my story and they were like, you're in. And I was like, oh shit, you're well, in. Now I got to figure it out. <laughs> and, but, but yeah, I'm super stoked on it. But anyways, man, not to keep you all morning. I got one last question for you. We ask everybody this and I yeah. like putting people on the spot with this question. And yeah. if you've listened to the podcast, you've, you've probably already know the question, but if you could have a cup of coffee with one individual dead or alive, who would that individual be? How would you take your coffee and why? Oh no. Yeah, man. I love this. You, you know it's, what's funny? You know what's funny is I've 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 seen this podcast so many times with all of your different guests, and I have never asked myself this question, which is shows my lack of preparation here. But but no, it's perfect because uh, it, it also shows my lack gosh, of prep to give you the question to prep you with it. <laughs> I've only prepped questions with one guest, or no, two guests, but that was Angus Morton and maybe justin oh, williams yeah but other than yeah, that i've yeah, never yeah. really prepped anybody and like i'm talking about we really prepped questions just so he knew what we were talking about he's a busy guy so um yeah 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 but but yeah man like uh other than that we i try to have these conversations just free flowing and fun um oh, but golly i don't that's a hard one um that's a really really hard one because there's 
there's thousands of people that I would I know, love to have and, a copy and, copy with. And that's why I like it because it's like, you got to go with your gut. Like, it's like, you, you know, whatever supernatural person or power you believe in is like giving you the opportunity to meet one individual, you know, yeah. who would that individual be? Like, you have to pick now, like that kind of thing. It's kind of like, if I gave you a million dollars and you had to bet it on something, like it's either you yeah. have to bet it or you lose it kind of situation. It's kind of the same deal. So let me preface this. I'll, I'll preface my answer. I'll, I'll make this answer a long one. Okay. So yeah, yeah. let me preface this answer by saying that I would love to have a cup of coffee with probably a thousand people, right. For sure. That I'm interested in because I, as a human being, I'm not married to my beliefs, right? Like That's awesome. I'm, I'm a list. I'm a listener. So I love to listen to people and, I love to listen to different points of view to see where, where do I land? Right. Where yeah. do I land on that? And I'm a love, I'm a lover of educating myself about culture and love and life and even religion. Right. So yeah. there's a thousand people that I would like to have coffee with, but I think, I think if I had to choose, um, I grew up in it, like in a Christian home, like yeah. going to church and all that. And so we got, you know, we got this heavy dose of, jesus and god you know and all those yeah, things yeah. so so i think that i would have to choose i probably have to choose jesus actually just interesting. Um, yeah, because it, even uh, even if you even uh, even if you don't believe that jesus was the son of god even if you don't believe that yeah uh history shows that he was a very kind and loving and compassionate person that cared about yeah. people and wanted to help people and so i need more of that in my life like especially sure. in a time that we're living in right we're living in this time of like anger and we're mad at something and we're we're fighting for our rights or fighting for other people's rights or whatever the case may be right i want yeah. a little bit more i want a little bit more of this and less yeah. of this yeah. and i think that he could teach me a little bit of that so yeah no, probably be jesus and no, it'll probably be an americano cool. Americano, yeah, yeah right on. And, yeah. Like, and that's super cool because, like, you know, I, I'm kind of the same way. Like, I, I, you know, I grew up in the South, and uh, when I left the South, you know, I, I, I was actually like your Bible thumping Southerner who would, yeah, uh, like, yeah. I knew everything, and then I realized, like, I don't, and it was the weirdest thing. Like one day, I just kind of woke up, and what if I was born in Israel? You know, what if I was born in Massachusetts? Like, yep. what if I was born yep. in California? Yep. And you just start, you start playing these like different scenarios, you know, what if I was, you know, Hispanic? What if I was, you know, I'm, I'm a white guy in South Carolina, like, I had it kind of made for me, you know, and it, it and, and, I, and I just thought I knew all and that was the moment that like, when I left South Carolina, and I just went to a different country, it's like, right, you start to realize that, like, man, if I was born in England, or if I was born in Syria, or if I was right. born in these different countries, like, I, I don't think I would believe the same way, you know? And so sure, sure, you have to right. kind of take that time to step back and disconnect and, 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 and to just hear, well, they grew like, like if you come out of the womb, you know, say thinking one thing, like, I mean, you spent 18 years of your life hearing this yeah. one and only thing, like that's what you're going to sure. believe. And, sure. and so it's interesting to me. It's, it's a religion and, yeah. and faith and, and and people and, and just yeah. culture is just so interesting from sure. that aspect um and so that's why i respect I agree. The, the 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 listening aspect the thousand people aspect because boyd johnson uh from boyd wheels said the same thing yeah. he's like i don't care who really? i have coffee with like i i just whoever yeah. whoever i'm in with the moment that's that's a that's i just want to meet people i just want to i just want to chat i think yeah. it's interesting and so I'm, yeah man i am no I am no longer interested at all in my perspective on things. I yes. am re I'm truly interested in other people's perspective because yeah. that's how I can actually form my perspective. If yeah. you're just in this, if you're in this tunnel vision of like, like if you and I hung out together and we are the, we, we believe the exact same thing and we only hang out with each other. How are we going to learn new things? So How dull. are we going to learn other perspectives, right? It gets so dull. I mean, it just becomes this, like, we need to start adding people to the mix, you know? It just gets, it, yeah. the perspective on life gets so dull. And, and and you know, I can literally go down this whole hippie, like, you know, sure. Joe Rogan style route of, sure. like, you know, the color of green. Like, we all see it differently. We all perceive mm -hmm. it differently. And I'll never, I'll never understand, you know, 
what you see versus what I see and, and communication, like, sure. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a really cool thing. And it really opens up a lot in the mind. But anyway, guys, I'll take you down a, a, a stoner trip the, another day. But, <laughs> <laughs> but guys, if you haven't already, please make sure you check out Andy's social media. Um, yeah, like I said, I mean, it's a guy that you want to live vicariously through. I mean, he's always on some crazy cool adventure doing some crazy cool thing. And uh, I've been trying to get him on the podcast for a while. And, and I'm so, so lucky to have him on here and, and to chat and share his story. And and so thank you again, Andy. I really appreciate it. Like I said, it's one of those things that I want to I want to make this podcast an opportunity for athletes and people in the industry and in the sport and everywhere and around and about to share them because we get to see them through a lens and we get to see them through a camera, but we don't really get to hear them. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you jumped on, had coffee with me. It's super cool, man. I'm, I'm so thankful. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And you're invited on every adventure, every one of them. And thank you. And also, everyone else is invited. Yeah, and that's the thing, man. Let's I take think everybody. I, yeah. Like I said, it's it, like I said, man. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Is like you know, uh, I had it was Evan Bybee on the podcast uh, with yeah. the ODA, yeah. and and we made that yeah. connection, and, and and it was it was so neat weird. to just see like how how big this community is, and yet how small it is all at the same time is is is. It's beautiful and it's exciting because hopefully we're just going to continue to grow it and, and make it one big family. So guys, like I said, be sure to check out Andy's Absolutely. social media profiles. Other than that, um, we'll see you next time. Cheers.